We resume with our heroes a few miles from Mezagoza. After a morning of hiking, they've decided to stop for a picnic, due in no small part to the rumbling of Ash and Pikachu's stomachs. In a usual excitable way, Nimona suggests they use this break to have a battle, but with a deep scowl, Arvin forbids this, stating they'll kick up dust and dirt all over his food preparation area. Placing her hands on her hips, Nimona feistily demands to know who made him the boss, though before Arvin can snark something back, Ash intervenes, suggesting that Nimona come check out the wild Pokemon with him, since he's barely seen any of the species look at Paldea yet. This puts a smile back on the girl's face, as she eagerly declares that she'll show Ash the best Pokemon Paldea has to offer. She then takes his hand, leading him away from Arvin and the little camp, towards the tall grass, where a small red Pokemon with a flame atop its head is using its ember attack for target practice. Eyes lighting up, Ash asks what that is, with Nimona explaining it's called a Charcadet, a fire type native to this area. Grinning, Ash declares that he's gonna catch it, wondering if maybe catching new Pokemon is his treasure, though it seems Charcadet has something to say about this. Its eyes flashing with mischievously as it turns to face the boy. Subsequently, what follows could hardly be considered a battle, as Charcadet evidently has no interest in fighting Pikachu when the Electro-type leaps from his trainer's shoulders, instead choosing to toy with its foe, employing tricks like Astonish to make Pikachu jump, and Fire Spin on itself as a protective mantle to deflect Thunderbolt when it's launched at it. From the sidelines, Nimona finds this fighting style frustrating, not understanding why a Pokemon wouldn't want to battle, but Ash on the other hand is a more experienced trainer laughs that every Pokemon is unique, and he's known a few like this one. All the same, he definitely wants it as his friend. At the word friend, something in Charcadet seems to perk up as it disengages from the battle and begins running and leaping over rocks as if trying to lead Ash somewhere. Curious to where this may be, Ash, Nimona and Pikachu follow, though to their dismay, when Charcadet squeezes through a gap in two rocks, they lose sight of it, with the group being forced to wonder if it was another trick. Nonetheless, they continue to search for it with no avail until the voice of Arvin rings out, calling his two companions back to camp since lunch is ready. To Ash's delight, when he returns, a large sandwich is waiting on his plate, which he happens shares with Pikachu, grinning from ear to ear at the interplay of flavors and textures, even if you can only express this through a cheer of, wow. Smiling fondly, Arvin promises that once he's studied the various Herba Mystica, he will be able to make even better sandwiches. Speaking of which, if his research is right, the sweet Herba Mystica should be located in the rocky cliffs not too far from here. Eager to help his new friend, as well as taste a superior sandwich, Ash grins that in that case, they should head there right after lunch, a sentiment the model head boy agrees with. Nimona alone seems less than thrilled, though when Arvin informs her they'll be battling a giant Pokemon known as a Titan, she does somewhat warm to the idea. Packing up Arvin's camping equipment, the trio then descend into the dusty valley, their eyes peeled for any abnormally large Pokemon. While at first Ash doesn't see anything out of the ordinary size-wise, he does come across one oddity, in a small grey insectoid Pokemon, who appears to be posing dramatically while in the middle of a battle, as its peers and larger opponent watch on in bemusement. Seemingly growing tired of this tomfoolery, the opponent decides to end things quickly, ramming into its foe mid-pose and dropping it in an instant. Though showing more guts than sense, the posing bug does not let this stop it, staggering back to its feet and resuming its poses, albeit more gingerly thanks to its injuries. Feeling inspired by this determination, Ash cheers the little bug on, with it finding heart and turn and giving its rival a stern look, as if daring it to strike it again. Unfortunately, this is an invitation the other is happy to accept, lunging forward and sending its gutsy goofy foe slamming backwards into a rock face with a devastating crack. In the face of such a blow, the smaller bug does not rise, and seeing this, its adversary gives it a look of disgust, before storming away with its cohort in tow. Worriedly, Ash rushes over the small Pokemon, picking it up and checking on it, while calling for his friends in the hope that they might have some medicine on them. Luckily, Nimona as an inveterate battler who is used to a Pokemon getting into scrapes, has a dose of Super Potion on hand, spraying it gently on the battered bug while Ash holds it in his arms. After a moment of wincing, the small Pokemon's injuries begin to fade, much to Ash's relief. Then as soon as the last wound is gone, the Pokemon is back on its feet, its cross-shaped yellow eyes flashing as it strikes a pose, clearly ready for round two with its rival. Unfortunately, by now the rest of its kind are long gone, with it falling to Ash to lay a comforting hand on the bug, suggesting that if it doesn't want to be alone, it could always come and join him. Briefly, the bug seems to think on this. Then, with what Ash can only assume is a grin, it strikes an eager pose, signaling its recognition of a kindred spirit and readiness to become Ash's teammate. Smiling too, Ash then pulls out a Pokeball, tapping the small creature on the head and making it his first official catch in the Paldea region. From his pocket, the boy's Rotom phone then speaks up, stating that Nimble has been registered to his Pokedex, while with a proud cheer, Nimona beams that she'll be more than happy to help train Nimble up, so it doesn't lose again with lots of practice battles. Unfortunately, there isn't much time for this, as in the distance, the pair hear the sound of a loud collision, or beneath them the ground rumbles. Then, as if to confirm their hunches, the voice of Arvin calls out to them from the same direction, stating that he's found the Titan, 
Rushing to their friend's aid, Ash and Nimona see the model head youth already engaged in battle with the Colossal Cloth, his regular sized shoulder looking rather measly in comparison. Wasting no time, Ash tells Pikachu to help him out, while Nimona has her poor mod join the fray with the two Pokemon leaping into action and employing an Iron Tail in close combat respectively to strike the giant rock crab. This in turn creates just the opening Arvin needs to have shoulder blast cloth with liquidation, causing it to scuttle away, though it seems the boy is not satisfied, urging his companions to follow the rock type back to its lair, since that's where the Herba Mystic is. Following Arvin's lead, the team set off, scaling a rock face only to find Clawford has settled in an even deeper dried up ravine with a large cave at the back. Figuring this must be their destination, Arvin lets out a war cry while slapping his own cheeks as if trying to psych himself up. Then, without hesitation, he drops down into the ravine. Chuckling, Nimona comments that she didn't think Arvin had it in him to be so rash, though all the same she follows suit, laughing giddily, while Ash in turn does likewise, landing beside Pikachu and preparing to resume the battle. Seeing that it's cornered, Cloth quickly grows aggressive, slamming its giant pincers to the ground and causing rocky outcroppings to burst up in an attempt to ensnare its pursuers, with Shoulder as a slow creature quickly falling prey to this. In contrast, the duo of speedy electric types do manage to avoid this fate, each leaping onto one of the ravine walls before closing in on their prey for another Iron Tail close combat combo. Like the first time, this proves devastatingly effective, though nonetheless, Cloth stays strong, thrashing about and even managing to catch the pair off guard with Rock Smash, sending them both flying. As luck would have it, specifically bad luck, Pormont's landing spot is none other than Shoulder's Tomb, with the electric type taking sizable damage as it plows through the rocky pillars. Nonetheless, this does have the benefit of freeing Shoulder, who is glad to be back in the fight, blasting the Titan with water once more and causing it to skitter in pain. However, even this is not enough to down Cloth, who retaliates with another rock tomb, this one managing to seize the still dazed Pormot as well as recapture Shoulder, leaving Ash and Pikachu as the only free combatants. Thankfully, the pair of old friends know just what to do, initiating their endgame strategy without even saying a word, as Pikachu runs up the side of the cliff face before leaping high into the air. For a moment, the electric red and shadow seems to block out the sun, then, with a fierce cry of his name, he brings forth a brand new light in the form of a thunderbolt which strikes the soaked Cloth, bathing it from head to toe in electricity and taking it out at last. From the side, Nimona gushes that this finishing move is incredible and that she totally understands now why Ash is world champ, her eyes alight, while beside her, Arvin takes off at a sprint, first recalling Shoulder, then bursting into the now unguarded cave, a hunger in his eyes Ash has never seen before. Though the boy does want to investigate, there is one order of business he must attend to first, running up to Pikachu and giving him a hug, while in turn the electric rodent squeals with glee before climbing back onto his partner's shoulder. Now that this is resolved, Ash with Nimona at his side follows Arvin into the cave, where they see him holding a bioluminescent pink plant. Curiously, Ash asks if that's the herb mystica Arvin was talking about, to which the older boy nods, saying it's the sweet variant that will need all four types if he wants to achieve his goal. He then hastily tucks the plant into his bag, muttering under his breath and urging his companions they should go gather up the rest as quickly as possible. Frowning suspiciously, Nimona asks what Arvin's hurry is, causing the boy to pause briefly before he casually answers that he just wants to finish his project. Even Ash can tell that Arvin is lying here, though before he can question it, Nimona states that if it's just that, they also have her project to do, adding there should be a team star base somewhere in the area, meaning that should be their next destination. Evidently, Arvin wants to protest this, though having no way to without revealing whatever his secret is, he instead turns to Ash, asking his little buddy what he thinks. Though shrugging, Ash admits it's only fair they do Nimona's thing next, since they've done the first bit of his. Sighing in defeat, Arvin concedes that he supposes that is fair, though the second this base is dealt with, they're going after to the next Herba Mystica. There is a hardness to the way he says this, bordering on aggressive, which causes Nimona to laugh at him and tell the model head boy to take a chill pill, something which only further aggravates Arvin, though before a scathing retort can leave his lips, a new light fills the cave, with Ash quickly recognizing it as the Charcadet from earlier. Like before, it seems to have a proverbial combi in its bonnet, beckoning the humans to follow it, then scrambling up a nearby rock face leading back towards the main route. Figuring this must be important, Ash tells his friends to follow him as he joins Charcadet, who immediately begins sprinting off off once again. By staying close to the little fire type, our heroes soon lay eyes on the only man-made structure for miles, a walled off encampment bearing the marks of Team Star, along with some flame banners. Grinning, Nimona goes to thank the fire child Pokemon for leading her to her destination, though to her surprise when she looks down, she finds Charcadet gone, having vanished in the brief moment she was examining the base. Worriedly, she asks if either of the boys saw where it went, though here she is met with shaking heads as they admit it must have slipped away. All the same, now they are here, the trio decide to descend upon the base though it seems they're not as stealthy as they had thought, as before they can even get close, the clearing of a throat behind them makes them all jump. Spinning around a face where they can only presume is a Team Star ambush, Ash, Arvin, and Nimona are instead surprised to find another Naranha student with sunglasses and a highly stylized pompadour surveying them all coolly. 
Truthfully, Ash can't shake the feeling that he's seen this guy somewhere before, asking his friends if they know him, with Nimona shrugging that she doesn't, though she agrees he definitely looks familiar, or in contrast, Arvin lets out an exasperated sigh, saying it's obviously, though before he can finish that thought, the newcomer cuts him off, introducing himself as Clive, a fellow youth such as themselves, who is desirous of a chance to do away with his scallywags team star. Chuckling under his breath, Arvin sardonically apologised for mistaking Clive for someone else, adding he should have recognised him as a fellow student from his youthful manner of speech. A claim which earns him a smile from Clive, calling it quite alright, clearly as oblivious to the irony as Ash and Nimona. However, now is hardly the time for mockery, and recognising this, Arvin asks if Clive is the one who asked Nimona to take out Team Star, though to his surprise, the answer comes from his own Rotom phone, as a heavily distorted voice replies that actually they did. The voice then elaborates that their name is Cassiopeia, and and they're the leader of Operation Starfall, with their goal being to free Paldea from Team Star once and for all. Still finding this highly suspect, Arvin questions Cassiopeia's motives, though blunt as ever, the voice answers that their reasons are their own, the only question is whether the four of them will help with this goal. Grinning broadly, Nimona replies that Cassiopeia already has her answer, while beside her, Ash nods that he's always happy to help stop bad guys, and Clive grins that he'd be a real square if he didn't help out his classmates. Sighing, Arvin admits that he too will help, though for what is worth, he doesn't appreciate this whole cloak and dagger shtick. Choosing to ignore this griping, Cassiopeia instead begins filling the strike team in on this area, explaining that this is the base of Team Star's Shadar squad, who are led by the fire type user Mela. In order to make this squad disband, they need to fight their way in and take out Mela, though they should be warned, she's a hot-headed battler who doesn't let up once the heat is on. Nodding, Ash states this is fine, since he's the same way, so he should be able to handle Mela once they get to her, though to his surprise, he is not the only one who is keen, as with a flash of light, Nimble bursts from its Pokeball, and strikes an excited pose. Curiously, Ash asks if this means the bug wants to fight Mela for him, to which the grasshopper Pokemon nods vehemently, causing Ash to laugh as he replies that in that case, they'll take on this Team Star boss together. Unable to shed his more teacherly habits, Clive inquires as to whether this is wise considering they're headed into the domain of fire types, and Nimble is demonstrably a bug. Though clapping the pompadoured party pooper on the back, Ash retorts that some things are more important than typing, like faith in one's Pokemon, and he has faith in Nimble, so they're gonna do this. Acquiescing with a sigh, Clive instructs his so-called classmate to lead on then, an order Ash is happy to accept as he takes off towards the base with Nimble and Pikachu in tow, all thought of stealth long forgotten. Subsequently, it does not take long for the members of Shadar squad to spot Ash, with them preparing their defences accordingly. Though undeterred, Ash tells his buddies to break on through, having Pikachu smash the gate open with quick attack before leaping through the hole. By now his three allies have begun to follow suit, though it seems that even together they would be vastly outnumbered, as dozens of grunts stand at the ready to battle. Luckily, this is a dream come true for Nimona, who brings forth her midday lichen rock and commands it to use Accelor Rock, something that Stony Canid is more than capable of, as it cleaves through the first wave, while beside it, Arvin's shoulder works to wash away any stragglers, creating an opening for Ash and his Pokemon to push onwards. Nodding his thanks, the boy then begins to run once more, telling his two partners to use Thunderbolt and Struggle Bug on anyone who gets close, resulting in a torrent of lightning bolts and glowing green missiles bursting forth. Much to the dismay of the Team Star defenders, they are knocked back. By now the path to the back of the base is clear, and spotting a building far larger than the rest with the Team Star logo printed on it, Ash surmises this must be where Mela is, and so takes off towards it as a sprint. Unfortunately, it seems the the remaining grunts have no desire to let the boy anywhere near their boss, promptly surrounding him and bringing out additional Pokemon to make their force all the more menacing. Recognising that his friends are too far away to help him now, Ash wonders if he and his two Pokemon will be enough to face down such a horde alone, though it seems they are anything but, as it is at this moment that Team Rocket decide to make their entrance. Landing their balloon with a heavy thump, the trio of crooks then begin to recite their motto, eager to make another bid at stealing Pikachu, but alas, fate has other ideas, as before they can even get out two sentences they are swarmed by the grunts who had been about to battle Ash, having been mistaken for his allies. Laughing his thanks for keeping the Team Star group busy, Ash is at last able to make a break for the big building, and as he had expected, Mela is waiting for him, bursting from inside atop a large car that resembles her flame aesthetic. Growling like a crackling flame, the Shadar Squad boss then demands to know if Ash is the little punk sent to mess with her crew, to which Ash nods, officially challenging her to a battle, with orders to disband the squad if she loses. Laughing heatedly, Mela tells Ash to bring it on, sending out a Torkoal, while he instructs Nimble to do its thing. Thing. Confidently, the bug springs into action, landing a double kick before striking a pose in an evident attempt to impress. Unfortunately, this just 
makes it a stationary target for Torkoal's flame wheel, with Nimble being sent skyward by the Force. Nonetheless, the gutsy grasshopper has no intention of going down here, catching itself in midair, and diving down to strike Torkoal with a dark type empowered headbutt. Staggering a little under the force of this blow, Torkoal can do little more than watch on, as a second double kick connects with its soft throat, followed by another of those headbutts, which Ash has learned is actually the move Assurance, with this being enough to finally drop the coal Pokemon. As Mela recalls her friend, Ash proudly calls Nimble the best, before ordering Mela to disband the squad because she'd lost. However, this only makes the redhead growl further, as she roars that this battle is far from over, before commanding her Starmobile to go. At once, the engines of her car roar to life with flames shooting from the exhaust as it bursts forward, catching both Ash and Nimble off guard, as neither had known that this was a Pokemon. As a result, the Grasshopper Pokemon is entirely too slow to evade the oncoming attack, taking the full force of a speeding car to the face, and understandably being knocked unconscious by this. Though it seems Melee is not done, as with a mad cackle, she tells her vehicle to come round and make roadkill of that little Pikachu too. Leaping between Mela and his oldest friend, Ash calls this totally unfair, though it seems the Shadar squad boss doesn't want to hear it, declaring that if Ash doesn't get out of the way, he's getting run down too. From the looks of things, Mela is not joking, as when Ash refuses to move, she commands her Starmobile to charge anyway, with the hulking metal behemoth closing in on its prey without an ounce of mercy. Then, something strange happens. The char cadet from earlier bursts from under a piece of scaffolding, landing in front of Ash and bellowing a fiery rebuke at Mela. For a moment, it seems like the Team Star Commander will run the fire child Pokemon down, just as ruthlessly as she will Ash and Pikachu, though to the boy's surprise, she then commands her Starmobile to stop, leaping down and staring at a char cadet's eyes. Still fired up, the little Pokemon continues its tirade, though instead of anger, this is met by a contemplative nod, as Mela sighs that it's right. She doesn't want to be like them. Curiously, Ash asks who she means, to which Mela replies the Team Star isn't what he thinks it is. Originally, they were formed to fight back against a group of bullies who were targeting each of the base commanders, as well as their big boss, but she guesses somewhere along the way, they kinda got lost. Nodding, Ash replies that he understands the feeling, while behind him, Arvin, Nimona, and Clive come into view, the latter looking troubled, as he asks if what Mela says is true, and Team Star were originally the victims of bullying. Nodding morosely, Mela confirms this, adding that before she joined the team, this little Charcadet was her only friend, with it being worse for most of the bosses since they had no one at all. Taking this all in, Nimona says that if that's true, then as student council president, she shouldn't be fighting the bosses, she should be working with them, a claim which makes Mela laugh a little bitterly, as she replies that while she'd like nothing better than to work with the school, Little Miss Prez and her friends will still have to prove to the others they really want to help, since most of the gang aren't going to be too trusting of the place that turned its back on all of them. Not engravely, Nimona promises that she will, reaching out a hand to shake Mela's, formally disbanding Shadar Squad. With this settled, it is time for everyone to go their separate ways, though the question remains what to do with Mela and the Team Star grunts who are stationed at this base. Thankfully, the answer comes in the form of Penny, who wanders into view at that moment, stating she's here as an envoy of Cassiopeia. After expressing Cassiopeia's pleasure with the outcome of this raid to Ash, Nimona, Arvin, and Clive, she informs Mela that if she would like, she and her friends could all become members of Operation Starfall, and help bring Team Star back into the light, an offer Mela is happy to accept. Likewise, her grunts all begin cheering that if Big Sis Mela's in, then so are they, causing Penny to grow a little bashful, as she tells the group in that case they should follow her and she'll get everything sorted with Cassiopeia. Smiling, Clive states that he will also accompany the group, wishing the trio of heroes well on their next endeavour, and promising to meet again soon as stalwart companions. The two groups then prepare to split up, though it seems there is one who is not sure who to go with. Char Cadet, who seems torn between its old friendship with Mela and the new friendship it has been developing with Ash. Spotting this, the former Shadar squad boss kneels down to pat its head, urging it to go with Ash, since it was invaluable in helping her burn away all her rage, so maybe it can help the rest of the old gang clear their heads too. Noting its understanding, Char Cadet gives Mela one last squeeze, then with a cry, it runs up to Ash, leaping into the boy's arms, and with it, into his team. And that's where we'll leave things. How will Charcadet adapt to its place on Ash's team? Can our heroes redeem Team Star peacefully? And what is the source of Arvin's obsession with the Herba Mystica? Find out as the journey continues.